Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story. Manager scolded me for the fact that the day before I had a bad swipe rate the day before. I took revenge and the manager did not know about it. The second story. Employee said that someone needs to be fired. I spoke with the client we lost and I decided that the employee's relative should be fired. The third story. Lazy coworker that shoved his dirty work over to me gets his share of his own medicine by pure chance. The first story is, write me up for unfair targets, I'll drive yours down too. I used to work at a pet store. I love animals and I enjoyed most of the work there, especially when people came in for the first big shopping trip for a puppy, except I had the most awful managers. There were three. I'll call them Snappy, Messy, and Doormat. Doormat was the only manager I could get along with because he was pretty nice and normal, but he let the other manager do lots of unkind things to the staff, and he would often look the other way, not wanting to start a conflict. We had these targets, as you do in the hell that is retail, depending on where in the store we were working that shift and what our job was. If you were on the shop floor, you had to make sure the shelves looked neat. If you cleaned the animal pens, you had to keep to strict rules and finish within a completely impossible time limit. Nobody finished on time and always got warnings about it. If you were on the till, you had to keep what we called a swipe rate up. This meant if a customer had a club card with us, we had to swipe it. If they didn't have a card, we would offer to sign them up. And if they didn't want to sign up, because let's face it, there's a card for freaking everything now, then we just had to accept that our swipe rate would fall. Now, this poses a problem because say I served two people at the till on a slow day, and there were sometimes days like this, and one customer had a card, but the other didn't and didn't want to sign up either. That meant my swipe rate would be at 50%. That wouldn't be any fault of mine, but the managers wouldn't see it that way as they never get in trouble for it, right? Doormat never raised this with us worker bees, but Messy and Snappy one day decided to bring me into the office out back, where myself and other bees assumed they drank complained and did nothing all shift, to give me 20 minutes of grief and a written warning, because my swipe rate was low one day. I would told them how it wasn't fair to reprimand people over something they can't control, but Snappy replied, sometimes life just isn't fair. I had gone on for months, as did other employees, with those unfair targets on something that was not in our control, and there was even a whiteboard that was updated every day in the lunchroom for all to see, where Snappy would joyously put the swipe rates for the day. If anyone was below 80%, Spoiler alert, ours all were except for the managers. They would get warned and threatened a lot of the time. Now managers were lucky. They didn't have to do jack on shift. I'd walked into the office to get some water after backbreaking work to find them watching YouTube videos, talking about Disneyland trips, etc. It's ridiculous. But the reason the managers had such a consistently high swipe rate is because they would watch the shop cameras in the office. And if they spotted a potential big sale, they ran out, swooped in on it stealing the sale from a worker bee, and got a single swipe in a shift, making their swipe rate 100%. Easy for some. Now on to the revenge. I worked the till one day and Snappy came over and berated me for having a bad swipe rate the day before, in front of customers waiting to be served. It was so embarrassing because customers don't know that it wasn't all my fault. They probably just thought I was bad at my job, and I took great pride in my job despite everything. Anyway, Snappy then logged on to one of the tills and I saw her ID and her four-digit password. But then when she was done doing her one, and only task of the shift, she forgot to log off. So once she was out of sight, I made an excuse at my till and had the line move over two feet to Snappy's. I spent the entire shift as I would normally, trying to get cards swiped. But if there was a customer who just didn't want to sign up, I wouldn't fret. After all, it wasn't going on my swipe rate. At the end of the shift, Snappy's swipe rate was 20%. That wasn't even me trying to get her a low score. That was a regular shift swipe rate. Since she's a manager, she got a call from whoever is her big bad boss and chewed out in the lunchroom in front of us all. It was glorious. From that day on until the day I quit, whenever she tried to talk to me or I caught her talking to anyone else about a poor swipe rate, I would tell her we have the same excuses she gave her boss and repeat her words back to her. Sometimes life just isn't fair. P.S. Whenever it was a slow day, I took Snappy's ID and password to log into the tills, and as a result, her swipe rate was consistently low like the rest of us, much to her dismay. What oh what could have been the problem? Edit. Customer doesn't want one? Use your own card? We weren't allowed to do that, 
We didn't have anything on our person except for a pet pad. If a manager saw us using a fare card, we would have our butts handed to us. The second story is, want to throw staff under the bus? Watch it fall back onto your family. I worked five years as a warehouse manager in a building that the head office was right above us. I worked with a CSR, let's call him J, and his father worked in the warehouse, let's call him L. We had a team of 30 people in the warehouse and we just had our online business active for about one year now. Before that, our main source of business was picking transfers for stores and really just stocking the stores. We finally opened the online part of our business. This is back in 2015, so we would also sell similar products on the web. The problem is that if a store got all the product picked of one thing while a web order came in for the same, then we would be at a loss because we don't have enough for the customer. It would already be scanned by an employee and packed on a skid. Not worth digging an hour to find a $10 product. Anyhow, J and L were both infamous for throwing people under the bus for their own personal gain. It almost seemed that they would do it whether it was personal gain or not. They just were low lives, the people I would consider losers. They both worked in the business for 10 plus years, and they were both entry level positions since they were toxic and non-promotable. One time I get into a meeting upstairs organized by my boss, CFO, the customer service manager and the three CSRs. It turned out to be kind of an ambush because I walked in with a stack of paperwork. I was new at the time, about four months into the job. We talked about the online business and where we did well, but ultimately where we fell short. Jay then dropped the stack of paper pointed at me and said this is a stack of issues that your staff have done in the past year. Literally a list of things even from before I was employed. He basically said that the warehouse didn't know what they were doing as the stack included mispicks, incorrect quantity, shipped, and other issues. I had said this is the first time I've heard of any issues. Why would we not bring the issues up one by one so we can fix the concern, or see where the issue lies and address it to correct future ones, rather than wait for them all to pile up and become more issues? I said this and then said, so wait, you were intentionally holding off on information that could have helped this business, so you can collect enough data to try to make someone lose their job instead? Jay said, someone should be fired for this. CFO quickly disagreed, but I said, you know what? I'll have to look at these issues and address with staff. So I took the stack and went downstairs. I found something interesting. No issues were brought about specific errors from the department L works at, his dad. So I went and asked the CFO if Jay could provide me details on each department, specifically department 35 and 40, which were our laboratory and LTL shipment business. Both are L's position. Eventually Jay took a week so I had the CFO ask again. He gave me a few issues but tried to sugarcoat it. The thing is, Jay had given me a few small issues with a customer we don't deal with anymore. Apparently, this customer dropped us as we had tons of logistical issues. So I called the customer and said I was a new manager trying to find ways to improve and wanted to know what happened. When the customer happily gave me a list of issues, I found it was all L that created the errors. In fact, we lost three high-valued customers to do it. So I went to the CFO and got approved to terminate with a bare minimum package. Jay and L lived together. L was the person paying for the mortgage. When Jay found out I was terminating his dad, he came to me and talked to me personally about it. He said, listen, my intent wasn't to get anyone terminated. It's simply to make sure we function well as a company. I said, Jay, I appreciate your concern, but you made it very clear in the meeting that someone needs to lose their position. And I found several issues where an employee had clearly made us lose three high value customers, and he's still creating issues to this day. Jay said, okay, but termination is a stretch. I said, I don't know how you found out I was going to possibly terminate someone in the first place, but I do what I must to simply make sure we function well as a company. I played dumb that I didn't know they were related, to the point where after I had terminated L and officially was told they were son and father, I had gone to Jay and said, I'm sorry I did not know you two were related. If I had known then, I would see why you were hiding information on the department intentionally. Over my time there, Jay had tried to do the same thing, and I eventually got him to a final written warning based on staff harassment. He still works there as a CSR. Will never move up in the company. Has his age capped. I don't enjoy terminating individuals, especially when it's a parent who needs to provide for their family. But this duo, F them. The last story is, I should do your work? How about no? A bit of context up front. I work in logistics to put it simple. The company is a regional pillar in the major and minor kitchen appliances scene. We sell, service, and install them. If I'm in the store, I take in all new inventory, label, repackage them, and store the product. Same goes for spare parts that our service team uses. With installation having around 12 teams at two people, and the service technicians being around 10 on their own. 
When I'm not in the store, I simply deliver the appliances that customers just want to be delivered. Besides that, I'm often helping with whatever others need an extra hand with. I've been doing this for roughly two years now. Being back where I did my apprenticeship in sales, things have never been super smooth. It's a business after all. Mistakes happen. First, it was taken back appliances dumped on my spot in the warehouse to be taken into the repair shop downtown. Same where I work internally. Without asking me or informing me. Just dumped so I could hush hush and do my job. I'm not petty generally. I love doing an honest job for honest money. Even when I'm being paid minimum wage for working more hours than 90% of the teams doing installations. I start coming in at 6.45ish to 7am. Sometimes I do lunch, other times I don't. I leave at 4pm generally if there's nothing left to do. There's a few black sheep, but one in particular grinds my gears. Shoddy work, leaves stuff that's not doable, but is when others try to work it out, and likes to be a pain in the A for me at times. Thursday it's his routine to pick up his kids. He's divorced, at 4pm allegedly. So of course he can't work later, right? On countless occasions I was tasked in picking up old appliances he didn't have the space for. Always around 12am to 2pm, my dispatcher would call and ask me nicely. When I'm back at the warehouse he was gone, mostly between 2 and 3pm. What a guy, am I right? No space for old stuff, but the new stuff, no problemo. Last week I was scheduled on Thursday to help another colleague with a side-by-side -side fridge setup. Basically two refrigerator units, freezer units, and wine cooler units besides bolted together, averaging 80 kilograms each, standing at roughly 1.9 meters tall, and a B and a half if you have to get them upstairs, which were heavy on one unit. The heavier one having 108 kilograms on the label. No big worries, we were three guys. Got the call from my dispatcher early Wednesday afternoon. No problem. One to two hours later, the customer apparently canceled that scheduled time. No problem. Before going home, I see the D piles of appliances for the next day. Looky there, also is side by side. Not my problem. They surely figured something out. A year back, I would have called and went out of my way to assist where I can. Today, I couldn't give less of a lick. Clarifying that 99% of installation teams are a duo. Q Thursday, 2 p.m. I'm in the warehouse out of town helping, or better said finishing what the responsible worker, friend of mine, told me I could do. Moving wooden pallets from one end to the other, and fixing up a small delivery to our store consisting of seven to eight grills in varying sizes, a sales clerk asked me to do days earlier. During this, I glimpse outside. D drove in, loading up the monstrous side-by-side -side fridges and leaving. 20 minutes later, my dispatcher calls. Better yet, his colleague. Dispatcher. Hey, OP, do you have by any chance time to go to town 25 minutes out to help D? Fortune favors the bold echoes in my head. Me. Actually, no. I got stuff here to do that shouldn't be piled up. Sorry. Dispatcher. No worries, I'll tell D. Biggest SH eating grin I had in a while. My friend, the warehouse worker, jokingly said, well, that was SH. Next day, I hear D being somewhat peeved about the ordeal. So sorry, fella, about not helping you F off when I would have arrived. Since that's what would have happened, wouldn't be the first time he pulled that stunt. And his colleague that day just told me today whilst I was driving him home how SH that was of me. Patience is truly key. Been waiting for a long time to get an opportunity like this. Normally, I'm the one they call for this type of emergency stuff, since no one else picks up the phone. But now I got the last laugh on this. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.